people asking about the property in Spain, could I do another video on some of the thoughts, what my plans are, um, and just for some general input. The first thing is there's a WhatsApp group that actually has been set up around the property. It's going to be a bit slow at the moment because I know um, myself, I'm going to be busy to about February. I've got a lot of stuff on here in the UK at the moment. But the other side of this being is one of the other members has also just recently bought a property. So I assume they've got some stuff going on with that. But it'd be good to get some of their input on any issues they've had uh, relating to the purchase, any the, the process they've gone through. Um, and mine for February, I'm hoping to be looking to get into a position to buy our first property in Spain as well. Now... There's two things to this. The first one is buying a property for yourself or, and it doesn't matter what the output is in the sense of you're buying it to move to it, buying it to move to it later or buying it to rent and make a profit. The same processes are, are already there. You're going to be doing the same thing regardless. Um, maybe someone else can look into the property ownership things because from what I've read, uh, where we are because obviously Spanish law can often be very divided um, on a local scale because some laws are in this uh, say Valencia but they're not the same in Madrid um, so for example I was reading up that you can have three properties as a property owner and it's not seen as a business at three so above three it can get a bit more complicated so that's something I need to look into as well um, but if somebody's already got some input on that, please feel, go ahead with it. Now, the other thing is we've been looking at some properties for a couple of people. Um, now, some of the areas aren't near the beach. Now, one of the things I want to stress on this is you, you have to gauge the facilities. If you're looking to get the maximum out of the rent, you need to look at what does that area provide. Um, there's no point having a beautiful house in the middle of a farmer's field. It's quite simply, you're going to limit its rental potential. Um, but if you have like a flat that's got a communal swimming pool, first thing is when you look to rent it out, get the pictures of the swimming pool. If it's got tennis courts, get the tennis courts in there. Get the distance to the beach, get the distance to the supermarket, get the distance to the chemist, get the distance to the hospital. These little one-liners are the things people look for. Um, if you have a, a taxi company and can pre-arrange their taxis and things for them, put that information in there. All these, these bits make it very easy for somebody to say, they seem very organized. They seem to know what they're doing. And even put, you could even say 10 euros for a welcome basket for tea, coffee, milk, um, croissants, just so that when somebody gets off the plane, they get there, they can, uh, there's already some facilities there. Um, it's these little things that make a big difference when you're trying to bump up the rent. Um, but also, it just shows that you actually care about your buildings. Now, one of the things we do. Um, in that sense is because we're managing more and more properties uh, April and uh, Denise are looking at somebody else's on Monday and I think I've got somebody to sort out a cooker for um, if I haven't messaged it's quite soon I'll be very busy so I'm going to send that message today um, but the point being is the rental market is going to stay and there's been a few people ask me well what about with the Brexit well, as you see, the Brexit has fallen flat on, flat on its face again. Um, where that's going to go from here is anybody's guess. I mean, if you're if it doesn't get through this time, I can see it going to general election. There's a possibility of um, some changes on that. Um, I'm trying to stay out of the politics, but it could see a change in the pendulum that currently controls the parliament. And then I think it would happen from there. Um, I'm trying to avoid words like referendum or so because I, this isn't about politics, this video. But the point being is the, the rental market will continue. This is the other thing to consider when buying a property. Is there enough people still there? You know, And I say that because some areas uh, were in a boom 
as such, they've sort of declined. A lot of people haven't paid their taxes, for example. They haven't paid the community charges. If the community charges are unpaid, eventually the swimming pool stops working. The, the maintenance on all the plants and the green areas don't get done because there's no money to do it. So you have to take these sort of things into consideration. How far is it from the airport? What um, is the location like generally? Is there enough to keep somebody occupied? Imagine if you were going there on holiday yourself, is it, is it an ideal fit? If not, look at other properties. Um, on the long term side, I'm trying to get La Mata to develop a bit more for people that are, are retiring or want to live in Spain, um, which is why A, I proactively encourage it, but B, it's a location that sits between Guadamar and Torreca, so you've got a two two fairly large locations uh, with a lot of shops and their own beaches and uh, you've got Orihuela that's not far as well there's job options in there as well if you speak Spanish there, there's opportunities in there um, it's not far from the airport you've got a lot of stuff on the doorstep from the cinema I think the cinema, cinema uh, does English films on the Wednesday as well don't quote me on that though, because I, I read that about two years ago. Um, you got bowling. You've got um, a lot of the stuff relating to like boat trips, fishing trips, um, the nature park. There's a lot for somebody on holiday. You can even go inside the submarine, which sits in Torrevieja um, Marina. The point being is, location-wise, there's a lot to do, and it's easy to market that. I also see that La Mata is actually seeming a bit more busy lately. Um, it seems to be recovering from the recession. Um, nearly all the shop units are full, for example. There's still a few empty, but the majority more and more seems to be opening up. It's becoming busier. Um, there seems to be more people there all year round. So the point being is it is an increasing area. Now, if you look at Pinamar, Pinamar sits between La Mata and Guatemar. It's sort of died a death. I mean, now, don't get me wrong, because I'll get flack of people for saying this, but I'm just saying, just look at it. The Chinese restaurants graffitied, vandalized, and just left. Then you you look at the, there is, the hairdressers are shut down. There's very little going on there. I don't think I've seen the swimming pool fall this year. Um, it needs an injection of money and promotion. So that's what the way I, I sort of look at it. I mean, don't get me wrong, but Tori Becker, uh, La Mata, I'm a bit annoyed that somebody vandalized the uh, restaurant up by the roundabout. It just devalues the entire area. So maybe something to have a word with the, the mayor about to see how we can action some against some of the vandalism that goes on. Um, but yeah, so you've got to put a bit of time in to see where you where you want things to be, what sort of return on investment are you looking at? Because if you're looking at a higher uh, return on investment, then you're going to be better off with tourists. If you're looking at something ticking over, then I would say get somebody in for the long term um, that's trustworthy, got a stable income, and will pretty much leave you hassle free. That's why I like the the pensioners because they, they treat the house as their own, not throwing wild parties, not struggling to get their paycheck every month. Um, yet they will look after the place. And this is one of the things I like about trying to focus on La Mata, because as the place develops, um, we should find that more people are there all year round, which then helps local businesses, which then encourages more people to stay all year round. Um, because you've got to bear in mind La Mata already has... I think it's there's at least three pharmacies that there's I'm sure there's more than that. Um, there's multiple bakers, multiple multiple butchers, um, a lot of restaurants, um, easy access by bus to anywhere because obviously if you head, get the bus from La Mata into Tolerica bus station, Spain is a, you can go anywhere. I mean you can get the 
I mean, you could actually just get the uh, the bus from there all the way up to Alicante and get onto the train and head anywhere as well. Um, so the point being is there's a lot of facilities. Also, there's still talk of the train line coming down from Alicante down to Tolobeca. When that opens up, then I would see a, there's very likely an increase of tourism. So there's lots of positive stuff. So what's the negative side? Well, the negative side is some people have mentioned about this, the tax when you sell a property. Now myself, I've got to say, I'm in it for the long term anyway. My, I'm not going to be selling any properties in Spain. Um, the, the reality is these will be set up to generate a monthly income. Um, and that's it. You know, when they go to my kids, when I get to a certain, certain point in life, um, it's up to them what they want to do with it at that point. But for me, I just want that steady money coming in every month because I look at it from a paycheck point of view that if I start getting 1500 a month coming in from um, property, then I can reduce the amount of work I do a year and get to a point where I don't go to work anymore. Um, I potter around and do stuff in Spain instead. Um, so... I just want to say the negative side is this, there can be some hefty taxes on them. Spain is notorious for, for trying to find any savings or something else that could prevent a sale going through. Say, for example, you're a Spanish resident and you have money in the UK somewhere. They may try and prevent a sale saying they want the interest off that because you should have paid tax on your savings, um, which can occur. So you've just got to gauge up whether it's right for you. For me, I'm not selling them anyway, so that's not really a problem. Um, also, if you upgrade a house, it's not a problem. But if you sell it, it can be seen as um, you can get taxed 20%. Now, I would say get a lawyer involved to look at some of this, because I was talking to a friend, Steve, about this recently, um, because he was saying he got some money back from his solicitor that was rightfully his. It's just that you've got to wait for it to go through um, the government. So I, I assume this is some kind of retention where the, the government assumes that you may owe some tax somewhere, so it retains a percentage of the property sale until a certain time, 12 months, whatever, and then we'll give you back. But as Steve said quite rightly, a lot of solicitors don't pass that money back. So be aware that that's something worth looking into because for for him it was a substantial sum it, it was it was several thousand um so it, it was definitely worth getting the money back let's put it that way and this is where it's worth doing some of your own due diligence not just purely relying on a solicitor um it's worth looking into some of the group some other people's experiences going through finding some of the processes yourself to see are you getting ripped off because I've got to admit you get ripped off in the UK as well don't get me wrong if you give people an opportunity to do it I mean solicitors charge horrendous fees but at the same time if you're aware of it you can do something about it um, I mean it's a bit like It doesn't matter how small the property is, you'll find a lot of people will stick 5k on it um, for the for the real estate agent. They'll want 5k on it. It doesn't matter how small it is when it should actually be a percentage. Um, so sometimes it's, it's gauging, you know, if you were selling the property, it's gauging is it worth doing it yourself? Because from a seller's point of view, there isn't that much hassle. The, the buyer has all the risk. So you may find that you could probably do 90% of it yourself and save yourself thousands, realistically. Because um, let's face it, if you advertise it yourself, got the buyer yourself, go through all the due diligence, got the money in the bank, what else is there? Because the, the buyer has these problems. Was the taxes paid? Is the, the drawing correct? Um, for example, where people have still got one square meter of land as their property because they were never updated by the developer so they were allocated a plot that was a certain size but they weren't sure what house was going to be built yet you know three bedroom two bedroom four bedroom design 
oh, we'll secure it with a one square meter. And then the tax is due on that one square meter. But the tax has actually been wrong for a decade. And there's no drawing. So you have to get the drawings, you have to get them submitted. And got to get the tax updated in line with the fact that there's a house there. Uh, in some cases, some of the documents have expired when they're supposed to have submitted everything. Uh, there's lots of things that can be high risk for a buyer. So like I'm saying the seller has very little risk on their side. If they can get it through the door, fine. All the problems, the the biggest one will be the Spanish tax authority trying to chase them, chase them for any money owed or they think they're owed. But beyond that, ain't going to be a lot. But from a buyer, going to be on the ball. Um, and then if there's any debt still on, outstanding, there's another one for, that the seller um, make it away with. But the, where that debt is, there's probably the deed sat with it as well. So, But anyway, there is an upside. I mean, the upside is, for me, this is how I'm doing it. I'm focusing on generating income to fund the property purchases. And once the purchases start working, they'll start funding the next purchase. Um, so the, the whole point is it's, it's going to be a regular process to, um, of investment to get to where I want to be. Um, it's not going to be an easy run. It's going to be a lot of, lot of hours, a lot of being away from home, etc. But once you get to a certain position, you can start taking your foot off the throttle a bit. And once we get there, that's what I'm looking for. Now, is it for everybody? The answer is no. Would I recommend other people doing it? I always say, make your own mind up. Because it's very easy to say, well, Matt said, think for yourself. It's up to you, if it's for you. Myself, I see Lamato is going to continue to be there. Um, the market may change, may end up with more Dutch and Swedish than Brits. Um, but that's just part of life. But even if we, the UK goes to recession, I can still see people going there because it's a budget holiday. If you've got less money, you're going to use the market that's available. You're going to, you're not going to go off to the, um, go off on safari in Africa or something. You're going to go with, with a cheaper, cheaper option. So the market isn't going to decline. I see Benidorm's changing, but that was expected anyway. It's the Spanish want to change its image. Um, so that's nowhere near where we are. But the point being is there's a prime example of they're evolving it from budget holidays for Brits, which leads to the head nights and stag nights, etc., um, to trying to promote it for Spanish families and changing the market a bit. But one thing it hasn't done is disappeared. It's evolved, it's changed. It has the natural facilities around it that get people to go there. It's got the beaches, it's got the infrastructure of easy airport access, it's got the easy access through trains, it's got the easy access um, through bus services, etc. So the point being is, it's not going to go away. La Mata is the same. It's, it's sat right next to Tolibeca. It's not far from um, Alicante Airport. So it's not going to die a death. If it's a slow year at one point, not really fast. Not fast. There will always be somebody that is looking to move to the area. And I know because I get messages all the time. Um, because a lot of people are still coming to Spain. And it doesn't matter how they cut it. I mean, they were talking this week about the the number of people moving to the EU, Brits, has increased. Um, this is the biggest year in recent history. Um, I think it was 2012 was about 40 odd thousand. 2015 was about six, I think it was 60 something thousand. And I think this year it's 84,000. So the point being is people are moving around a lot more than they were doing previously and settling in other countries. So I don't see that changing much. There may be a global recession around the corner. There may be a UK, Spain, whatever, downturn. But the, get, the whole point is people still need somewhere to live. There will still be people going on holiday. 
the main thing is not to overstretch yourself. Don't get into the domino um, effect of investing, property goes up in a bit of value, lend against it so you can get another property, because that's the domino effect. When that one collapses, they all collapse. Um, just buy what you can afford and just keep, keep sensible with it. That's the best advice I can give. All right, thanks for watching.